Uh, so yes, I'll be doing the missions updates, mission partners updates. <coughs> and um, we'll start off with Paul and Jonah, who are in the Philippines. Uh, we heard a few weeks ago that um, Paul was having some issues with his ears and uh, we were praying, we all prayed for him as a church and um, thank God it wasn't as serious as what it could have been so he didn't need to get any surgery done on his, on his ears but he does need to get uh, hearing aids um, which are about five and a half, five thousand seven hundred New Zealand dollars so pretty expensive uh, so if you want to give towards that, we think we've given some money already towards that um, if you want to give some more just feel free to transfer it to our account and just put Paul's hearing, uh, hearing aids or something like that next to it. Um, so Paul and China, uh, for those that haven't um, been here before for this, um, they're based in the Philippines. Uh, they work for YWAM, which is Youth with a Mission in Baloo in the Philippines. Not the Baloo Yeet. So this is the update uh, that was sent through. <coughs> So they do a discipleship training school over there. Um, and they say that the discipleship training school is now done with the three month lecture phase. And now currently they're on their outreach. So with the discipleship training that YMAN do all around the world, as you do some in-class stuff, um, you learn a lot of principles and lessons, and then after that you actually go out and do an outreach somewhere. I think the YWAM and Nelson um, were going to go to Thailand, but I'm not sure if they actually made it to Thailand because of COVID and other things. Um, but yeah, the Cybership Training School, you do your class stuff and then you go out a outreach, <coughs> outreach trip somewhere. Um, if there's something interested in doing, talk to YWAM and Nelson. Um, they do this as well. And it'd be something uh, that would be really good to get into if, you, if you've got the ability to do it. Um, they said that the witness to how God moves in and through the life of each student. Uh, we've seen how God moulds each of them and grow in their love to Jesus and their faith in Him. Uh, they said they're even more excited to hear these stories about how God works through them as they go and spread the good news during their outreach. Please include them in your prayers. Pray for their strength, their protection, provision for their needs, and guidance of the Holy Spirit wherever they go. So this stuff, as you can imagine, um, they need a lot of resources, especially finances, because um, you pay a bit of money to do the course, you can, obviously you're not working, that sort of thing, and you've got to travel overseas, um, and we know it's not cheap, so if you want a good cause to give to, YMAN is definitely a good cause that you can give to as well. Um, they have given me some photos now, Luke 9, 60, your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Mm. See there, it's not about having fancy facilities or anything like that. It's all about your heart for God and your thirst for knowledge and learning about God and growing your faith in Him. Uh, we as the body of Christ is great, uh, grateful for the privilege of being called by Him. We praise God for the opportunities he is giving to serve him as we follow his will. So here are the updates from all the ministries God has entrusted us here in Wyoming Bulu. So they have a family ministry. Uh, we are continuously doing our Bible studies with the parents in the family ministry. We are so grateful that for the first time there are families from this group who responded to God's invitation to take the discipleship training school. There are two of the Dahl families that we are ministering to. The Eduardo Dahl Jr. and his wife Jenny, together with their son Caleb. It's also Ernie and Elena Dahl with their daughter Irene. Because of their obedience to God, we are hopeful that there will be more families who will be encouraged to respond to God's call of following Him. So here's some families here that we'll be ministering to. Uh, the one of the families that we're ministering uh, to in the family ministry group, we praise God that they responded to God's call and God's call following him through the taking the discipleship training school. I also do a regular Bible study in the family ministry. There's a reasonable turnout there, it's about the size of our church. <laughs> 
Um, there's also the 414 window ministry. Um, if you haven't heard of that, it's um, to children uh, between the ages of 4 and 14 years old. Every Saturday morning, we teach Bible stories to the kids in Marala, which is one of the communities they're reaching out to. Uh, they teach them songs and dance for Jesus, and then they feed them. Praise God for the people that he is continuously using to be the channel of his provision for these children. Our prayer is that these kids will grow up knowing Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. So it's in um, one of those uh, poorer communities, some slum areas. Um, so as well as teaching them the Lord, they actually feed them because they not only need nourishment for their soul, but they, they need nourishment for their bodies as well. So it's not just about the talk, it's about the walk. <coughs> Um, as we read in the Bible, you know, what good is it if someone's freezing cold and you say, God bless you, but you don't actually give them a jacket? It's the same sort of thing. The kids are hungry mm. and they're blessing them, but they're also feeding them, which is awesome. Mm. Uh, they're also doing a student sponsorship ministry, which is with elementary, high school, and college. Uh, we're thankful for the Lord that we can now meet our uh, meet our students in the elementary, high school and college ministry weekly to teach God's word to them, to lead them in praising God and to have fellowship with them. We hope and pray that the Lord will continue to protect each one of us, uh, staff and students, so that our face-to-face -face fellowships will continue to become regular now and this pandemic would not be a hindrance anymore for us to continue ministering to these students. As we know over there, it's been pretty hard with um, COVID um, and lockdowns and all that sort of stuff. So for quite a while, they haven't been able to meet and do a lot of these ministries that they normally do. Uh, so praise God that they're able to get back out there again, start meeting these people face to face and helping um, meet needs out in the communities. Here's some photos from the elementary ministry in the high school ministry and in the college ministry uh, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near which is Hebrews 10.25 so if you hear people saying that church is not a building and I can just be for myself at home or anything like that there's a verse for you, Hebrews 10.25 it's important for fellow believers to meet together, have fellowship together, praise God together. It's churches, the people, it's not the building, but when you're not meeting with other church members, you know, it's, it's not very good. Uh, they also do a Bible basic small group. Uh, aside from having the weekly fellowship and Bible study that we do, we also have once a week small group. This September, we just finished reading the Bible Basic Manual together with some of our students in high school and the college ministry. Through this small group, the students were able to learn basic knowledge about God and His words. They learned about who Jesus is, about baptism, communion, and how to read the Bible, and more. We desire to create another set of small groups to continue teaching the same lessons to other students so they can also learn and grow in their relationship with Jesus. So as well as church on Sundays, it's very important to have your small groups. And it's great to see that they're doing these small groups because, um, you know, church is good to meet together and praise God, but their small groups is really good for diving down deep into the God's Word and, and growing and learning and discussing, you know, important topics and that sort of thing. So if you're not part of a small group, um, talk to Terence and Shalom and um, get amongst it. photos and uh, graduation. Glory to God for another year that has passed. Last July, through God's faithfulness and provision, we were able to celebrate the graduation of our senior high school and college students. In this way, we also gave honour to the parents of the college graduates who employed a big part to their children's journey in pursuing their education. God remains faithful to these families into our ministries in spite of the challenges that the pandemic has brought us. 
Thank you for all your prayers and support. Another batch of students now closer to reaching their dreams. Yes, congratulations. Graduates. Uh, annual interview, parents' orientation, and school supplies giving. As we celebrate the end of the previous school year, another one is about to unfold. <clears throat> this August, we had our annual interview and orientation to the students and parents of the Student Sponsorship Ministry in preparation for the school year 22-23. Through our interviews, we were able to talk to each student and their parent and ask how they are doing in school and at home. It was a privilege to us to minister to each of them, pray for them and encourage them through God's words. During our orientation, we had the chance to lead the parents in worshiping God through singing and dancing. We shared the word of God to them and prayed for them. Then it is followed by giving the school supplies to the students. Praise God for the people that he uses to become the channel of God's love and provision to these students. So again, being in the, in the um, some areas in the poor communities, um, they get school supplies to help give to the students for school. Um, when they had the lockdowns, they um, also provided laptops and that sort of thing so that kids could do online learning. Because um, when you're in these poorer countries, you know, you really need to get a good education to try and get ahead. Um, and you find that if they're not doing schooling and not doing something, then they tend to get in trouble and do things they shouldn't be doing. So it's great that they can get in there in the community, you can put on programs for the kids, teach them things, activities, teach them skills, and um, help them to be involved with the schooling as well. They've even got some school bags and everything. Uh, the road to where, what and how is ready. Now let us further respond to, come follow me. Pray for God's continued guidance and supervision to each and everyone here in the loop face. We are almost ending our year and you have witnessed how much the Lord worked by entrusting us these tasks. Let us all together acknowledge his power working in us to no other reason but minister to his people around this area even to remote ones uh, where and we are connected. Help us raise to God the further asking of endurance and all aspect, for we still have a lot of schedule to fulfil with the deepest hope, as always, to contribute an advancement of his kingdom. <coughs> Preparation for hosting two discipleship training school teams from Thailand, finalising errands for the um, Student Sponsor Ministries annual Christmas parties, together with the 414 and family ministry. So we see from uh, Paul and Charlie there over in the Philippines, they've got a lot of ministries going on, uh, doing the discipleship training school for Iron Man, the 440 window for the kids, um, also working for students and also the parents. So uh, keep them in your prayers and when we do our giving on Sundays, if you want to put in some extra for them because we send the money over every quarter, um, just right next to it you know, for Paul and China, for the Philippines, something like that, and we'll make sure we send the money over to them um, with the lot that we send over. Uh, together with your prayers and unceasing concern to make Jesus even known to this place, these will all be possible. We cannot wait to share with you in a few months from now how God answered our prayers. We are more than delighted every time we are mentioning all of you to our God during our prayer and intercessory time. From our hearts to the heavens, Jesus is our centre. Praise God now and forever. Um, there's some of the details here, so if you want to um, check out the website or watch, check out the Facebook or email them, anything like that, uh, that's the details on the uh, board there. You can also message them too if you want to send the money directly or if you want to um, ask for prayer requests or anything like that that you can pray for, for them. Uh, there's the details up there. Uh, it's Pastor Noma and Sister Olive. Uh, hello dear NIC family. We are grateful for being one of your partners in the Lord's work 
and we want to share with you some of the highlights for September and October. The Lord provided new instruments, uh, guitars, electric drums and speakers through our mother church, Hills of Zion City Church in uh, Barakina. The church had membership class last September to remind our current members of the Bibles and vision of the church and to also formalise those who visit the church regularly to be bona fide members. Uh, another session is in the works for those who are not able to attend. Uh, still thanking the Lord for continuous face-to-face meetings every Sunday and also for the online services we have during the weekend, weekdays, uh, Bible studies, prayer meetings and teens fellowship. Uh, as we heard um, recently, the Barbaros went to uh, went over there last September and to attend the uh, brother's wedding and also had Pastor Terence and Shalom speak one Sunday service to best and encourage the congregation. Uh, they have some prayer requests, um, consistency of each member to the Lord. Uh, the church will have a heart and commitment for evangelism and discipleship and financial and spiritual breakthrough for everyone. So they haven't seen uh, too much, but here's some photos. Uh, Teen Bible studies on stewardship. stewardship. See it, Tom. <laughs> Pastor Terence up there, um, preaching your work, giving them encouragement. That's it from them. Uh, next is Cuthbert. So it's interesting if I've seen this, I'll put up there. <laughs> um, I asked him about his chickens, and he said, uh, he sent me through some stuff, but he didn't send me anything about his chickens, and Henry wanted to know all about them, he's not here today. Uh, but he said he's still got the chickens. Um, he said at the moment they're just sort of breaking even, so um, it's not making millions off it yet, but at least he's breaking even. And he said that uh, next time we should be able to get me some more photos and videos from his uh, chicken empire. Uh, greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I do hope this report finds you well and keep. Back in Zimbabwe, we are okay by the grace of God. As we are venturing into the festive season, we are just hoping for God to continue opening new doors of opportunities for each and every family. People are still hopeful for a better life because at church we encourage each other that, as the Bible says, all things happen for the good to those who love the Lord. We're keeping in prayer, and now we have cell groups where we do home groups, Bible study in different sections of Rotendo and Redcliffe. Uh, so they're in sort of Torwood area. Rotendo and Redcliffe are just nearby towns. It's kind of like Stoke and Richmond and Nelson, all areas close together. Uh, despite the economic challenges, we still get to break bread every now and then. The rate of the Zimbabwe dollar to the US dollar is now trading at 1 US dollar to 800 Zimbabwe dollars. So, as we know, the economy over there is pretty bad. Even when Pastor David and myself went over there uh, about seven years ago or so, um, it's just getting worse and worse. Uh, they tried to get US dollars in there to increase the economy and that sort of thing, but the politicians stole it and took it out of it is Zimbabwe, uh, so now they're using the Zimbabwe dollar. They also try and use um, bonds and mobile currency over there. Um, it doesn't sound like much to us. Um, dollar twenty-five US for bread. It's a thousand Zimbabwe dollars, and if you earn maybe fifty dollars a month, a um, dollar twenty-five is a lot, yeah. a lot of money, yeah. especially when you've got to pay your fifty dollars rent yeah. a month and that sort of thing as well. So it may not sound much to us, but to them it's a lot. And um, over there too, they work hard, very, very hard, and often the employer won't even pay them their wage, or not even their full wage. So they work hard, work all, you know, all day, and they don't want to leave the job too, because if they do that, then they probably won't get another job elsewhere. So the employers, a lot of them take advantage of that and don't pay them properly, or don't pay them at all. So. Um, it's pretty bad over there. Uh, 
as we've seen, seen ourselves over there. So they really need our prayer. Uh, we, we do send some money over to help comfort his family, um, and he does a lot of work in the church over there. Really nice man, he looked after Pastor David and myself when we were over there. Um, really nice, loving, caring heart, and loves the Lord. Um, and you're having a family and that sort of thing, it's very hard to, to try and get ahead. And, and you know, he's got to do three, four, five jobs just to try and get some money to come in to help pay for food uh, for his family. Uh, the church is um, planning to provide meals and groceries for the less fortunate this December, and I'm spearheading this campaign. The whole idea is that we reach out to folks that can't afford and encourage them to come to the house of the Lord where there is abundance of blessings. It may be challenging, uh, but we believe God will make a way for us. My family is okay. Our kids are now staying with their granny in Norton. That's my wife's mum. They are doing great in school, and Malache, my wife, just recently finished off her nursing aid course with Simmers Care. I've been busy with church projects and still hustling to get clients uh, on our catering business. My mum is struggling with a cough, but we pray she gets better by the grace of God. Um, our community is lush green these days. Uh, it's been raining lately. It's, uh, that's a turn over in Redcliffe. It's normally over there, if you've seen our photos from the past, it's normally very dry, very sort of red dirt, um, no green everywhere. So it only rains for a couple of weeks or something of the year, so it doesn't rain much. Um, that's why they struggle for water and stuff as well. So they've had quite a bit of rain lately, which is good. And it's amazing how it goes from just desert red dirt to lush greenery uh, just after like a week or so of rain. It doesn't take long, it sprouts up everywhere. Um, and then after the rain's finished, it just dies off again to nothing. So. Um, we're very thankful to get rain over there um, for gardens, food, and also for drinking. Because um, a lot of people over there will just get water from stagnant ponds, and the water's diseased, mm -hmm. so they get sick, um, they can't afford health care. So it's awesome when they do get rain, um, top up wells and bores, and also um, they put out their buckets and things to keep water as well. So we need to pray for more and more rain over there. It's, uh, we complain about having too much here. Yeah. Uh, but over there, they, they, they can't um, get enough of it. So, need to pray for rain over there. Uh, we have elections next year, though most people haven't registered to vote. They've just given up on all that and focusing on their day-to-day -day lives. So the problem over there is it's very corrupt. Uh, and you might vote for who you want, but you're probably not going to get that. Um, you probably heard a lot about Mugabe back when he was around, and um, people that try and oppose him will just disappear or will get murdered, get things taken off them. So uh, the politics um, very, very corrupt over there. And um, if you say anything against him, uh, you're likely to disappear as well. So you've got to be careful who you talk to and what you say to people over there. They pass the load. <laughs> Even if your Kiwi will disappear, it doesn't matter where you're from. Um, so the White House uh, hasn't sent very good photos, but that's the garden area. Uh, they have a massive outdoor gazebo area. Uh, they also have some thatched huts. It's kind of like um, kind of clay mud brick huts with some thatched roofs and um, holes for windows where nice big bugs come into when you sleep there. <laughs> uh, the, so, um, yeah, it's where we stayed. And last month they had a electrical fault and um, ended up having a fire over there. Oh, really? So a whole lot of the thatched huts uh, where we stayed have uh, burnt up to ash. Uh, because I'm unfortunately unable to get some photos, I was going to try and get me some photos last time, but uh, those famous huts we know well, and um, oh. it's where we normally stay where we go there, so unfortunately they've all burnt up. Uh, 
the fire was huge, and it also burnt down uh, the big outside gazebo area, and they lost quite a lot of their property in the fire. The firefighters took a long time to get there, and they came with very little water, so they couldn't extinguish the fire. So there's another problem over there of not having water, as the firefighters can't even put out the fire because they haven't got any water to use. And um, over, in, over in Zimbabwe, everything unfortunately is very, very slow, um, including the fire and the ambulances and police or anything like that. They're very, very, they probably won't even turn up the same day, wouldn't be surprised. Um, yeah, he's just saying he's struggling to get photos of the fire to upload, so hopefully next time we have some photos for us. Um, that's it from Cuthbert. So we need to continue to keep him and his family in our prayers. Very, very hard. We can't imagine here in New Zealand how hard it is over in Zimbabwe. Um, being over there firsthand, seeing it, it's just absolutely shocking. Um, see how hard it is just even to get basic stuff like water. Um, it's absolute mission just to try and get any water. So as I was saying earlier, people just end up drinking diseased, green, slimy water because that's all they can get. And um, it's either die from not drinking water or die from drinking diseased water. Um, so it's absolutely terrible. We need to keep keeping our prayers, pray for rain, pray for God to bless them, pray for um, the corruption in the government to, to be wiped out and be, to get a good godly leader who's going to turn the country around. Um, it can make a huge difference. Um, when you're over there, one day you may have power and water, the next day you may not. Uh, just yeah, the council services are pretty much non-existing. Uh, it's just yeah, terrible conditions to live in. Uh, so this is Pastor John and Sister Ina. Nakadanga. The <laughs> Mets on mission, they call this house. So as we heard uh, last time, they were heading, um, leaving the Philippines, and they're going to do their missions over in Thailand. Uh, last July 31st, John officially resigned as one of the pastors from the Jesus Folk Church, where he served as a full-time pastor for 17 years, while Rena will be resigning from her administrative work in church by the end of August. So that's, that's happened already. So it's a long time. He's been there 17 years as a pastor, and they're just uprooting their whole family, their whole life uh, from the Philippines to head over to Thailand to um, be missionaries over there. So it's a massive change, um, something that most of us would never do. And it's quite a scary change. <clears throat> yeah. So we need to pray for them as well. Um, keep them in your prayers. Uh, beginning this August, into our departure day on September the 26th, we're focusing on our last phase of preparations. The elders of the church and the members prayed and released our family with their blessing to be full-time missionaries in Thailand. Mm. Earlier this month, John travelled to Chiang Mai for a week to look for a house for the family. It was also a time to meet our co-laborers at Within Reach Global Foundation. John was also able to reconnect with old ministry friends that he has worked with throughout his years of leading short-term mission trips in Thailand. It was also a time to know and feel the present spiritual atmosphere in Chiang Mai and see the ministry opportunities waiting for us. I think Terence and I went to Chiang Mai, didn't we? Yeah. Near there. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, but over in Thailand, if you haven't been there, uh, every f five metres there's a Buddhist statue. Um, very, very strong in Buddhism over there. Doesn't matter where, where you look, there'll be a Buddhist statue somewhere or a temple around. Um, so, yeah, very strong hold of Buddhism over there. Uh, there's a nagging pain in our hearts to know this fact. Our hearts yearn for God to use us and send us where Jesus needs to be known. We want to be part of God's story in Thailand. Our hearts cry out to him, Here I am, Lord, send me. Mm. We want to see that 1% turn into 100%. Mm. It is indeed a humbling privilege to co labor with God in providing gospel access to the unreached people group in the 1040 window. Uh, the attorney to myself went over to Thailand and the people over there just crying out, um, you know, I'd say uh, Zimbabwe is very bad, this is bad too. Um, kids, the parents force the kids into prostitution, 
Uh, people will kidnap kids and they'll work them hard on the boats and then they, when they're dying of exhaustion they'll just throw them overboard to drown. Um, women get kidnapped, things like that, and you know, people force into prostitution, so um, they really need God over there. And um, it, it, as we've seen from the past, the Portland Reef working over there, there's been a lot, they've been doing a lot over there. There's a lot of ministries set up over there um, trying to uh, get in there and, and teach people other skills so that they can get out of prostitution and do something else, so they teach them English. Because when you learn English, it opens a lot of doors up over there. Even um, when Paul and Ruth were over there, they taught people English. And they were able to get them jobs as translators. So they got them out of the prostitution, got them jobs as translators. Uh, you know, to try and get them out of these, these lives. And a lot of these, um, even the ones who were growing up, they got kids and stuff like that. And um, all they know is, is prostitution and, and nothing else. So it's great that they can get over there and teach them skills and get them out of that. Um, area because you know they don't want to be there, they're just there because they have to be, they've got no other choice. So we need to pray for them and do what we can to help them. Uh, John found a suitable house for the family and the house has enough space for the kids. And there's a garden and an extra room for guests who will visit. Um, our two older kids, Jethro and Kari, just finished their school year. Our son Jethro graduated as a valedictorian of his class, while our daughter Carrie graduated with honours. Our three kids will start their school year 22-23 on September the 1st, 22. There's a photo there. After 15 years and nine months of praying, how many of you prayed that long for something? <laughs> uh, 15 years and 9 months of praying, waiting and preparing, our family is finally here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. We arrived on the evening of September the 26th, 2022 at Chiang Mai International Airport and we were welcomed by our family from With Reach Global Foundation. It's an entirely new season for our family to be out into the mission field, pursuing the heart of God for the unreached people group in Thailand. Again, um, massive thing, uprooting the, the family and the child, young children, uh, going to a whole complete new environment and, and country. Our community, our coming to Chiang Mai was full of excitement. A month before our departure from the Philippines, we, encouraged, uh, we encountered a problem with our visa application which we tried to find a solution to up until the last minute. We ended up pulling out our application and our passport and decided to travel to Thailand on a tourist visa. It was a step of faith that we know we have to do in order to get to Thailand. Uh, to add to the excitement, the night before our flight to Thailand, a Category 5 typhoon landed in the Philippines, passing through Manila with a massive rainfall and very strong wind speed. Uh, we heard a bit about that a few months ago. Both international and domestic flights started to get cancelled one after another. We were worried that our flight would be cancelled. We prayed and declared God's word for us in Revelation 3.8, which says, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut, because you have a little power and have followed my word and had not denied my name. <clears throat> we held tight to his word and peace rested on us as we endured the typhoons pounding overnight. The morning revealed God's glory as the sun peeks through our window. The storm is over and a flight was not cancelled. We are clear to go. On September the 26th, 2022, we boarded Thai Airways flight TG621 on a one-way ticket to Chiang Mai, Thailand. Amen. Two days after our arrival, we met our Within Reach Global Foundation family who welcomed us warmly. In this family, we have Chinese, Americans, Thais, Latinas and Filipinos laboring side by side to go into the unreached people groups of Northern Thailand to share the gospel. 
We were thrilled when we heard the many stories of God's divine movement in many different parts of Thailand. Uh, to date, there are only 0.77% Christians in this nation. This is despite the fact that the gospel has been in Thailand for 194 years. For years, many missionaries from different parts of the world have laboured to further spread the gospel uh, to different provinces and people groups, but to very little result. But a new day is dawning on the horizon for Thailand. The seeds that the early missionaries sowed in this nation are slowly sprouting. The past few years, especially this pandemic, have been different. There are pockets of spiritual awakening that have never happened before, and it feels like God is about to bring a massive harvest of souls to this nation. The people, especially the younger ones, are more open now to listening to the Gospel. There is an increasing hunger for the Holy Spirit among believers and church leaders. I believe we are at the tipping point for the greatest spiritual awakening in Thailand, and what an opportunity to be here at such a time as this. So it's awesome we're praying for 15, 16 years, massive typhoon, and then they still get there, and um, as you see, they're there at the right time. God's time is always the right time. Very recently, we travelled to Lang Phan, a province about an hour and a half outside of Chiang Mai. We met with the local pastors to see how we can assist them in their ministry. It was also a time of cross-pollinating our vision and advancing the gospel in this part of northern Thailand. We feel the spiritual atmosphere shifting in many different provinces of Thailand, and we are privileged to be here to see the Spirit of God move across this nation. Our family will be travelling to Hanoi, Vietnam to visit our non o visa, which is a missionary visa. Not to process our yeah, visa. Please pray for God's favour to be upon us and that the Thai Embassy will issue us the visa. Um, so as I heard just before, they had issues getting it and they had to pull it out and just go on a tourist visa. So we need to pray, get them in our prayers that they will get their missionary visa. Um, and it will go smoothly, no issues, no problems, and they'll be issued their uh, missionary visa for Thailand. Uh, some ministry opportunities, uh, Alpha course training. This coming month of November, we'll be leading an Alpha course leaders training among Thai and Chinese leaders. These leaders will be tasked to start Alpha course groups in different spheres of influence. Help us pray that this effort will result in opening doors for campus and workplace ministry. Um, discipleship and mentoring. We will also start our discipleship training with some of the leaders of our Thai and Chinese team. Pray that we will be able to establish a long relationship with everyone as we take the journey of discipleship. <coughs> Please include our children and our whole family in your prayer. Our kids are adjusting to our new life here in the field. All three of our kids are now doing homeschooling. This is a totally different experience for us. So imagine out there doing all that and then you've got to also homeschool your kids. I think homeschooling the kids would be enough. Yes. Finances. <laughs> we want to ask you to pray for our monthly provision while we are here in the mission field. Pray for more churches and individuals to partner with us that will help us sustain the ministry work we are doing here through their giving. So if you want to know where your church giving goes for us, this is another ministry that we give to. So we give to Cuthbert in um, Zimbabwe, we give to Nomad Olive in the um, Philippines, we give to John and Rena uh, who are now in Thailand, and we give to um, Paul and China in the Philippines as well. Here's some photos. It's easier than saying that down there. And we've got Gideon, Pastor Gideon and family who are in Thailand. So 
So he never says much, he says about two words and sends about a hundred photos. <laughs> So every Wednesday they do a prayer together. So you see this um, building here, for those that were here in, uh, a few updates ago, um, they've got this church built and um, they just sort of built it, um, didn't have any money to start with. So they just prayed God for funds and as funds came in, they bought some bricks, started building it. They prayed for some more funds, got some more funds, bought some more bricks, started building some more. So they never had the finances to do this, they just kept praying for some money, got some money, started building it, got some more money, got some more, until they got, finally got enough and finished the, um, the job off. So they all built in faith, and a good way to strengthen their, their faith and trust in the Lord as well, and the Lord provides everything. Uh, they do some home visits, so in, in Thailand as well, um, they do a lot of work in the poor, uh, some areas, community, uh, some community next to the areas, and um, they always have a van full of goodies, drive around for a bag full of rice and some noodles and uh, eggs and some different different things. And um, when they see a need, they'll just slam on the brakes and jump out and give them some food and uh, pray for them on the spot. Uh, me and Terence experienced that a couple of times when we were over there, which is great. Just driving around and. Pull up, jump out, eat some food, pray for you. Um, you see a lot of people in there sort of going through the bins and trying to get stuff out. Um, they also do a lot of work uh, with the children over there and they built a community centre, just a small, little small room. And um, just about every night of the week they put on activities for the kids, doing um, English lessons, they do guitar lessons, uh, play games, different things each night. Because um, if they don't do that, and the kids are going to get into trouble, and they're going to get involved in alcohol. A lot of them have parents who sort of are drunks or yeah, alcoholics, that sort of thing. Also, um, stops them, sort of keeps them out of the getting caught up in the, the prostitution, that sort of stuff as well. So um, I think five, six nights of the week, they put something on this community with the kids, you know, just to give them something to do, teach them about Jesus. Show them love and feed them, uh, teach them skills, skills that can help them in later in their life so they don't get caught up in things they shouldn't. And also keeps them sort of out of the, because um, a lot of other kids over there will be drinking and um, into trouble, that sort of thing. So it keeps them out of that, that scene, which is great. It's like they're handing out some nappies and things like that to the families as well. So all the necessities that they need. Um, they had some new, just pretty much every update, they have a whole lot of people that they baptise, which is great. Always baptising new believers, which is awesome, to um, having all this, this growth happening and, and people dedicating their lives to the Lord and being baptised. So it's great to see the updates. Um, he's always sends me lots and lots of photos of people being baptised. So there's some there. Great thing over there is it's like taking a bath, it's so warm. <laughs> it was uh, so hot over there. I thought I'd go for a swim and it was hotter in the water, I think, than it was <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> uh, they're out there teaching the Bible out in the community. Um, it's good when they always have uh, services or get togethers, there's always some food there too, which is great. I love the food. Uh, <laughs> so, not only feeding their, their souls, but feeding them physically as well. Um, a lot of these people were getting this, was saying earlier, they got. They don't have much or don't have anything at all. Um, <clears throat> we met some uh, some ladies that were um, that God saved them from prostitution, and they got involved with the church. And then they um, I don't know how it all started, but they all get involved with hair cutting. So they learn learn how to cut the hair. And one of the ladies here, she's got an awesome story. She's done a book. Um, she's saved from prostitution and a lot of other things. And she started her own um, salon called Sheer, Sheer Love. She is spelled S H E A R. Sheer. And um, she's also took on some um, people from uh, ex prostitutes and taught them um, the skill of cutting hair and, and that sort of thing. But um, they also go out there cutting people's hair. Um, so again, these people can't afford haircuts. 
And it's just another thing, so all these little things, you know, imagine having nothing and someone gives you some food, gives you some nappies for your children, uh, gives you, puts on lunch for you, gives you a haircut. All these things are boosting up people's spirits. And um, ultimately the praise goes to God. You know, these people are bringing glory to God's name and these people are thanking God that they're getting this stuff provided for them. Um, and these people doing this too don't, don't even have much themselves. Pastor Gideon, um, who turns and I met over there, he doesn't even take a wage from the church. So all the giving that they get at the church, he uses for these community projects. And we, our church sends him money as well. And he takes none of the money from South, doesn't pay any wage, does it all for free. He doesn't only preach on Sundays, but he's out there most days of the week doing stuff with the kids, doing stuff with the poorer communities, um, outreach. He's doing so much work, you know, they're not getting paid for it. They also go into prisons, youth prisons, and um, share, share the gospel there. Um, they also go into women's prisons and they supply things like um, sanitary pads, shavers, you know, all the stuff that they don't they tend to get in prison. Pretty much over there, you get chucked in prison, you need, you're on your own. Um, it's not like here where you get a nice fancy bed and a TV and three meals a day. Over there, you need someone to look after you. So they're um, over there, you know, going into these prisons, putting things on, going to Buddhist schools, Muslim schools, things like that, doing little dramas and stuff with a uh, Christian twist. And um, it's great the stuff that they're doing over there, reaching out to these people's lives. Um, so she and others was talking about was the hair salon that um, this lady started. And um, the building homes for members of the church who uh, uh, sounds like Cambodian members of the church. And um, over there it's nice and simple. Brick homes, concrete floor, Nothing fancy, but it gives them shelter. Um, gives them, you know, even having something like that gives you a, a sense of security. Gives you, um, gives you a sense of safety. Imagine being out there without a roof over your heads. You know, it makes a massive difference just having something simple that you, you and your family can um, take refuge in. And um, they're out there building these homes. Um, most of the stuff's donated or they get money donated to buy things. And um, they're putting in free labour uh, to build these homes for them. Um, good thing too is these other people that don't have jobs or anything like that, they can also get them involved, teach them a skill, uh, also keeps them out of trouble because they're out there building something for the community. Something that's gonna last um, and make a huge different difference in people's lives. <coughs> Uh, doing some kids activities in the community. So again, they buy, buy stuff um, that for money donated or stuff gets donated to them. They put together little care packages, little boxes and passes for the kids. Um, we were over there, being Terence were over there, they took us shopping this massive, what was it, like a discount department kind of grocery store kind of thing. Everything's it's massive and cheap and you get your trolley and you go fill it up. Stuff's just so cheap by in bulk. Yeah, putting together all these packs and stuff for um, the children and, and people in the prisons, that sort of thing. So it's, like, it's also showing that, that someone cares about them because some of these people don't have, don't have um, like a stable family or family at all. And they're, they're outcasts, they're out in the poor communities and people just walk past and sort of throw their noses up at them. But um, these people are coming in and showing them, showing them love, showing them that they care, teaching them these skills. Just imagine these little kids, mm -hmm. how it will brighten up their day. Um, even you know foreigners coming in, you know they're not used to seeing um, white skin and pink skin coming in <laughs> and um, playing games and stuff with them like that. So it just really lightens up their faces. It shows you you don't need anything fancy, you don't need a fancy building, you don't need a PlayStation 5 or um, coffee machines, anything like that. All you need is a tarp and um, some pen and paper and then away you go, guitar. <laughs> Sometimes we think, oh, you know, God, if I, if I get that minivan or if I get, the, get this or get that, then I can go out and do stuff in the community. But these people don't have anything and they're out there doing it, it's nothing to do with 
what you have or what you don't have. It's about what's in your heart. Uh, there they go, teaching some English. You can see these uh, sheets they've got. Um, Paul, and, well, Paul and Bruce put together a lot of those because they used to be school teachers here in New Zealand and then they, as we know they went to Thailand for quite a few years and they put together a lot of English packs uh, which they've distrib distributed amongst um, a lot of these churches and, and groups to use. And um, teaching them English is teaching them a skill that can help them later in life as I was saying earlier, some of these people have now gone out of prostitution and now translators of different churches and different groups. And um, teaching them the skills can just uh, you know, help to get them out of these bad situations and um, really lift them up. It's so hard when they're stuck in this, in this in prostitution and things like that and then they become a Christian but they don't know anything else and don't know how to get an income. So being able to teach them something else and get them out of that situation is awesome. And they um, got blessed by Rise Ministry and took the kids to the water park. So again, these kids, you know, they could never dream or imagine of going to a place, a place like this, a water park. Uh, but they've, they've um, paid for them all to go, supplied the finances, and they're out there having some fun. Uh, these to here, uh, missionaries from New Zealand. Friends of Paul and Ruth, they've gone over there to help for a wee while. There's Pastor Gideon sitting there. Uh, so they did a uh, with and prayed with some missionaries from New Zealand who are friends of Paul and Ruth. And that is the end of that. So it's great to see You know, some, a lot of churches, you give your money on Sundays and you think, you know, what are they doing with it? Private jet, the say, these it might be. But it's awesome to see that the money that we're giving to this church is going to these places. And they're so thank, thankful for it and they're um, giving praise and glory to God for it. So it's, you know, it's awesome to, to be part of this, these ministries around the world, not just here in New Zealand, but Thailand, Philippines, Africa. Uh, China, so it's great to see, see the difference it's, it's making. Um, it may be a little bit to us, but it's so much over there, as we're seeing in Zimbabwe and Thailand and that sort of thing. A few, few New Zealand dollars makes a massive difference over there. So, you know, you might be thinking, oh, I'm only giving 10 bucks this week, but that 10 bucks can be feeding um, a family for three meals for a day. So it's, it makes a massive difference. Um, that's it for me.